Hey everybody, welcome back to Fantastic Microbes and Where to Find Them. My name is Jordan and today we are going to be talking about my favorite books about the microscopic world. Now, I really got into microscopy because of a lot of these books that I'm about to introduce to you. So these have been really helpful for me. Um, if there's other books that you have found helpful or that I haven't mentioned in this video, go ahead and comment about them below so you can share with, with the rest of the community. Uh, basically, I'm going to divide this video into three separate sections because all of these books kind of have to do with a couple different things. So first off, I'm going to talk about my favorite books that kind of just introduce you to the microscopic world. Um, and then the next section we're going to be talking about is kind of uh, experiments and things um, that you can do. Like there's books about, you know, experiments and stuff like that. And then lastly, we're going to be talking about reference books. So like once you're out in the field trying to identify organisms or trying to figure out what's what, uh, some reference books are really handy. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first couple of books that I wanted to share with you, I wanted to be the most accessible. And so this one is very highly recommended by me and by a lot of others. This is called the uh, U.S. Born Complete Book of the Microscope. And the reason that I like this one is that it's, you know, a, a pretty comprehensive, but the best part is that it's very, very colorful. So if you have kids that you're trying to get excited about the microscopic world, um, or if you're just wanting a really colorful book, uh, this is the book for you. It has lots of great explanations um, that are, you know, really good for like older elementary or middle school uh, kids to understand. And um, it really covers, you know, the whole variety of the microscopic worlds, you know, so from protists to uh, the human body to, you know, bacteria, fungi, viruses, you know, this is the like a really, really awesome book. And uh, again, I really like it because it's super colorful, uh, but, you know, but sometimes like when you look under the microscope, you're not always going to find like extremely colorful stuff. And these are really high res images taken through uh, scanning electron microscopes. So just fair warning, if you buy this book and you go into and get like a compound microscope thinking that you're going to get some of these crazy awesome images, um, you know, you might want to lower your expectations a little bit. But anyway, it's a really cool book. My next microscopic book doesn't really have to do with live microscopic organisms, um, but it's still a really cool book and I really like it. It's a great coffee table book. This is called In Search of Stardust, and this is about microscopic meteorites, um, which you can find all over the world and uh, you might even be able to find some uh, on the roof of your house. And uh, the reason that I like this one is, again, this is uh, very colorful. Um, it's got really great descriptions of all of these different meteorites and um, how to determine like what these things mean. Uh, it's all written by this guy who uh, has kind of made it his life's goal to categorize uh, all these different types of meteorites that fall from the sky and, you know, the, the microscopic versions of them at least. Um, again, very, very cool book. Um, it's a little bit more you know, advanced reading, but it's still very pretty to look at. The third book that's kind of in the fun category is this one, which is also a um, very colorful cover. Uh, this is called I Contain Multitudes by Ed Yong. Um, this one is a little bit more advanced reading, so I'd say probably uh, maybe high school-ish. Um, it's about 250 pages. It does have a middle section, you know, with a couple of, you know, colored photographs to kind of help show what this guy is talking about. Um, but this book is really neat because it takes kind of a journalistic approach to the microscopic world. So you kind of follow this guy um, who has done a lot of scientific uh, journalism in the past and he, uh, you know, goes through interviews, a bunch of different people and a bunch of, you know, different uh, disciplines dealing with uh, either zoology or other parts of the microscopic world. And um, I, when I first read this, it kind of opened my eyes to uh, some really amazing facts about microbes on the human body, as well as microbes on other animals, and just how everything is connected. Like, there is, you know, a whole universe out there um, that we're really just starting to understand. Like, we've, we've been studying microbes, you know, for, you know, 
upwards of 300 years, maybe even 400 years uh, with the invention of the first microscope, but there's still so much more to be discovered. And this book really does uh, justice to, to the whole theme of uh, microscopy. Very, very fun read. Um, again, a little bit older, maybe high school. So the last book that I have in this fun section is a little bit more of an advanced read, and so I would recommend it for college students or more advanced high schoolers that are looking to gain some knowledge in uh, evolutionary biology and things like that. So this is called Life on a Young Planet by Andrew Knoll, and uh, this is all about, you know, ancient, ancient uh, bacteria, archaea, and, you know, the youngest life on Earth that we have evidence of. Now, because bacteria and uh, viruses and things like that don't really leave good fossils behind, uh, scientists, geologists, and, and the like, they have to get really creative with how they find uh, evidence for this life. And so this book goes into all of the uh, chemistry and geology science that goes behind finding uh, this ancient life. And what really excites me about this is that right now we have, you know, the, a rover on Mars that is sampling dirt for ancient signs of life on Mars. And I feel like a lot of the science in the book here, uh, you know, could be really similar to the science that they're using to try to find the ancient signs of life on Mars, looking for chemical signatures and stuff like that. Um, this book, you know, it's a couple hundred pages. It's about 250 pages. It has... Um, a couple of pictures in the middle of fossils that we do have, and uh, it is, anyway, it's a really cool book. You know, there's a couple of charts and graphs and, and stuff like that. That's the kind of stuff that, that I really like in a, in a nonfiction science book is just show me all the data. Like, I, I, I don't know. I get really excited about stuff like this. So um, if you're really interested in a really cool part of history that scientists are, you know, getting really better at understanding, this is an awesome book for you. So those are the books that I would recommend if you're wanting to just learn a little bit more about the microscopic world without doing too much about it. But I know a lot of you guys probably want to get your hands dirty, especially if you have recently purchased a microscope, you probably want to start exploring. And so I have a couple of books here that are more for the experimenter. And so um, first off, this book that I just recommended, um, the complete book of the microscope, this does have a couple of experiments in here. Uh, I'd say probably about like a dozen. Um, however, there is a better book that is sold with microscopes that has a bunch of, you know, uh, different experiments. And this one is called The World of the Microscope. So if you've been shopping on Amazon for a microscope or like even amscope.com or like one of the microscope websites, you've probably seen this book pop up and um, it is a really good book. So it is filled with, you know, a little, it's, it's kind of similar to this one, um, except like this one goes over kind of the history of the microscope, but it also talks about like all different kind parts of the microscopic world. Now this book does the same, but without the fancy imagery. So a lot of it is, you know, just kind of hand-drawn uh, stuff, but it also has way more experiments. Like on every single page, there is stuff to do. And I really started exploring the microscopic world with this book. This was an indispensable book for me a couple of years ago when I started. And again, yeah, I'm just an adult, but it is still a lot of fun for me and but it's also a lot of fun for kids and it's a lot of fun uh, for parents and kids to do together you could just pick one page and you know just do one thing together um, or you, you know the kids could try them on their own there's one that I'm uh, that I got into right here this is about like how to make crystals and um, I've made a few videos on crystallizing things like vitamin C um, I got most of my instruction from here uh, but also from uh, another couple of YouTube channels, one of them being Micro Hunter. So anyway, lots of fun, this book. There's still a lot of things I have left to do in here. Uh, one of them is finding microscopic fossils. And uh, yeah, so highly recommend, highly recommend, lots of fun. Now, besides these two, these two were sold like crazy everywhere and promoted everywhere. There really aren't a lot of other microscopic experiment books, and I really wish that there were more. Um, the only other one that I've found um, on stores like Amazon is this one, uh, which is still pretty noteworthy. 
Um, this is called Adventures with a Microscope. It's got lots of different illustrations about the microscopic world, and um, it divides things into adventures or, you know, kind of experiments. So, you know, there's like, um, I think about 50, a little over 50 different adventures and things that you can do. And some of them have to do with looking at bugs. Some of them have to do with looking at, um, you know, microscopic algae, diatoms, things like that. Um, but this is an older book. It, this was written um, in the 1940s, and so the language is a little bit dated, and um, I'm sure some of the terminology is a little bit dated as well, and um, there's just a lot more uh, words than there are pictures, so it's probably not the most exciting or fun one to have uh, with your kids, but still... Um, like, I mean, so if you were going to decide between the two, I would probably recommend this one. Um, but I mean, this one is a little bit more thick and has, you know, a little bit more uh, experiments. But this one has a little bit more of a variety of experiments, I would say. All right, so that'll wrap it up for my books that have to do with experiments and things like that. Now, I have one more section that I wanted to share with you, and this is all about reference and identification. So uh, these are the two that have helped me. Uh, this one's called Free Living Freshwater Protozoa, and this one is Ponds and Small Lakes. And I'll tell you why I like each of these um, and why I recommend, you know, getting one over the other. So first of all, with free living freshwater protozoa, it is basically this. Um, there's lots of different, there are lots of different microorganisms out there um, that live in other parts of the world, but I live near freshwater, and so this is kind of the key that I was looking for. So this is really great. It has, you know, uh, photographs or photo micrographs, uh, if you will. Um, and then a couple of hand-drawn images, and, but this whole book is just one giant identification key. Uh, and so if you're wanting something that's pretty comprehensive, um, this is uh, one of the more comprehensive uh, printed books that I could find that helps me identify organisms. This is a little bit more pricey. Now, the cheaper one is, that I would recommend uh, if you live in more of a freshwater area is this one that is Ponds and Small Lakes. So this one is really great. It has uh, a couple of photographs, but um, most of it is kind of hand-drawn, um, especially like when it comes to the identification key. Um, you know, there's a lot of hand-drawn images here. Um, and, but they're still, uh, they're still pretty good and pretty helpful when you're trying to identify things. So um, yeah, I've, when I've been trying to identify organisms, I first go to these books uh, just because I prefer going to books first. Uh, and then I'll go to the internet and see if I can find things there. Um, I'll do a whole episode of my favorite internet reference guides and stuff if you guys are interested. Uh, but you know, for me, like nothing can replace a good old fashioned book. All right, so that'll do it for this book review video. If any of you guys are interested in buying some of these books, I will have a link in the description below. Uh, if there's a book that you, you really love about microscopy that I didn't recommend or that I didn't mention, uh, go ahead and put it in the comments below so that way our uh, viewers can you know explore and learn a little bit more. Uh, I'm all about you know expanding this community and uh, I would love to read some more microscope books as well. So uh, anyway, I hope to see you guys again real soon. Sorry it's been really long. Uh, way in between these videos. Uh, I've just been getting a little busy uh, with life and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, gotta come back for the small things, you know? Anyway, see you guys again for the next episode.